Christ Embassy and Winners Chapel are the reason for immodesty in churches today, Stephen Emele said. I am going to say this even though I know your stone will be waiting for me, but I will still say it anyway. Those that will agree with me will, and a whole lot will not agree, no problem at all. At their infancy stage, both Christ Embassy and Winners Chapel, Living Faith, propagated the belief that come the way you are, God will change you afterwards. They allow people to put on any type of rubbish into the sanctuary. They made it look like a business strategy to win more customers from other churches so that the church will grow. They studied the weaknesses of other denominations, especially the Orthodox churches like Catholics, non-charismatics, Presbyterian and Methodists. They strategized on how to win souls and they actually won them. And they made each soul to feel like a king. After all, he that winneth a soul is wise. You know what happens when a new product hits the market? They will reduce price. They will engage in intensive advertisement. They will even go door to door. They will brand their packets with flashy colors so as to appeal to the customers. They may lower the standards set by the monopolies. Their aim is to join the competition. And when they gain a foot at the market, they will relax back to the regulated standard. This was exactly what these two churches did. Instead of staying in church from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., they slashed it into three services. Why will you sit one place for that long? Don't you have something doing? Come, we will make it 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. The next will come in after you. Isn't that wonderful? And instead of singing old mama songs, Let's add some reggae to it. Let's dance. This place is your own party house. Dance the way you used to dance at party houses. Hold a sister and give her a holy rock song. Sing aloud. Dance and sweet. This is your own party house. And a short while into the service, a comedian is invited to spice up the service. Little by little, the world crept in. When you dress like a stripper to church, the usher will inform the pastor that a new soul has been added. The pastor will call you forward to the cheering of the crowd. You will be admonished to stay. You will be entertained with drinks and sausage. You will be intensively followed up. Nobody will tell her she is dressed improperly. She doesn't need her ties. Soon, that soul finds that this is the true house of God, and she will refer to her former church as boring. Meanwhile, that same newcomer will not dare dress like that to a service in the Lord's choosing or Deeper Life Bible Church. Invite him or her to Deeper Life. She will intuitively dress properly. Nobody will tell her that here we use her ties. Nobody will admonish her to cover her body. She will naturally know how to dress. But the moment she is going to win us, she becomes lousy in dressing. In case she dares a soul into deeper life. Trust me, she ushers. We get a huge breed of wrapper and embalm her head until they will start looking for her ear. They will also cover her shoulder as if she has cold. 
and they will shower her where to stay. An usher will always hear her eyes on her. Ask yourself, will you dare dress like that to deeper life? Will you try it when going to MFM? Will you use that sleeveless top when you are going to Catholic or Assemblies of God's Church? You only do that when you are going to Winners and Christ Embassy because you know they won't correct you. My greatest pain is that Bishop David Oyedipo and Pastor Chris Oyakilome did not realize that a lot of young pastors looked upon to them as role model. They began to copy so many of them. There is a church called Beautiful Ministries in Oka. Oh man, you need to go there and see. Except if they have modified their service formulas, many young men began to fry their ears because they want to imitate Pastor Chris. Okay? I actually followed this development acutely. Bishop David Oyedipo soon began to realize that people are beginning to abuse the laxity he let. People started to think winners is where you do as you like. So he began to make rules to curtail these trends. But the seeds had gorged enough fiber that changing become hakulin. The people were already used to this newfound freedom. And if you try to insist, you will sound rude. At a time, I saw one message of Dr. Paul Eneche, where he recounted how he lashed out at a supposed church member who dressed so shabbily. He called her demonic. He tore her ego apart and told her that the church is a sanctuary and not a party house. She was visibly embarrassed and she left, but the message had been passed. Oh, Steve, I know I have opened a can of worms, but God saves us. I am convinced that there is an atom of truth in this write-up, even if you may not agree with me, that all of it are true. I am not accomplished organist. I have worshipped in all the churches I mentioned except the Ang Anglican communion. I did not say I have visited. I said I have worshipped with each of them for not less than six months each. So I know what I am saying. Thank you for listening to this news. You see, um, Stephen, you are right anyway. You are right. But then, I want to make something clear to you. Winners Chapel or um, Christ Embassy never made it a system or a dress code for anyone coming to church. The protocol in any of these churches that you have just mentioned, Christ Embassy and Winners, is modesty. It's modesty. They promote modesty. They preach modesty. You know, when it comes to service of God, people choose where they feel that uh, their spirits their spirits can 
contains with with God, you know. People enjoy going to winners not because of their style of dressing, but because of their style of worship and praises and their style of praying to God. Let me tell you something. The truth of the matter is this. I'm not trying to side any of this church. But what I'm trying to say is that is that the prayer you say is what God is after your intention and how you present it is what God is actually looking at. It, not until you completely give yourself a complete bam, or not until you completely bam your whole body and pray from morning to night before God will hear you know. The way you present the prayer and the intention itself is what God is actually looking at. God is not after the hours and time you spent in saying that prayer. God is after that intention. God is after your sincerity. In that intention, God is after your heart. How sincere are you? That is what God is looking at. So, my viewers, let us not be confused. Let's try to understand the uniqueness of God and do it right. So, viewers... Don't forget, your comments are also very important. Don't forget to leave them behind. Click on the subscription button as well as bell button to receive more updates. Thank you.